What's up guys, Silver here with another Spartan Assault Achievement Guide. This time we are doing part 1 of 117, which is earn all gold stars in all operation missions. So we're going to cover Operation A gold stars in this video. And one of the biggest tips I could give you in general if you're having trouble getting to a gold star threshold on any of the missions is to modify your loadouts before you head into a mission. You could change your primary weapon, secondary, armor ability, but the biggest thing I think you could do is add a damage booster. There is a score booster that increases the amount of points you get per kill and everything. But since you could kill enemies faster with the damage boost, you could actually string together a lot more sprees. And you could also finish levels a lot quicker. And those two factors will be able to increase your score more so than a simple score boost would be able to. I'm just going to have a standard loadout for all these missions. But if you're still having trouble even after using these strats, just throw on a damage booster. It should be able to help you out significantly. Also, just something to point out real quick. The gold star thresholds do vary a bit based on whichever version of the game you're playing. There are four different versions of this game. There's one for Xbox One, one for 360, one for Windows Phone, and one for Windows 8. So these guides will be based on Xbox One's version. But if you're playing a different version, just be aware you may need to shoot for a different uh, gold star threshold. So here we go. Mission A1. Mission Steak Sauce. We're going to spawn up and grab the grenades and some ammo in these crates on the right here. Then we're going to wait for the two grunts to come down in a drop pod. We're going to melee these guys, and we're going to try to string together a multi-kill as we go to the left. There's more enemies over here. We're going to try to kill them with a one-shot magnum kill. And then we're going to move all the way to the door shield over here where the enemies are spawning in. And we're going to start meleeing them as they come across. So we're going to keep our multi-kill going by killing these people as they spawn on the map, basically. Basically spawn killing them. So we have our spree going. We have our multi-kill going. We're going to keep our multi-kill going a little bit more. Those are the two best ways to uh, increase your scores, multi-kills and sprees. So we're going to try to keep those going as long as possible. And uh, the other thing is killing all the enemies in a timely fashion and finishing the level. So uh, as we come over here, we want to throw that grenade that I did at that elite and then just start meleeing those grunts as they come across. Then we're going to cut back again. There's going to be some more grunts. Again, we're trying to keep our multi-kill up as long as possible. It looks like uh, it was cut a little short there, but that's okay. We have a lot of points here going. And uh, we are just going to cut back and eliminate the elite squadron at this point. I like to try to kill the elites with a grenade. And if not, I use a, uh, an assault rifle to soften them up and then usually switch to a magnum for the one-shot kill. And again, you have a regeneration field if you're ever getting low on that shield. So mission accomplished. 86,200 is the base score we achieved, which we could see is more than enough. You only need 35,000, at least in this version of the game, to hit the gold star. So uh, with the time bonus, we got up to 94,000. So we're going to start off this next mission, and we're going to actually pre-damage this uh, turret up here a little bit before we hop into it and actually use it, uh, just to uh, kind of weaken it, because we're going to blow it up in a second. But we're going to use it first to kill as many enemies as we can in this section. So again, try to kill them all within a, a certain amount of time of each other so you get the multi-kill. And then we're going to actually blow up that opposing turret, and then hop out and kill the turret we were just in. So those turrets, even if they're not occupied, they actually count as a kill. So you could use them to string together more multi-kills, and you could use them to just get a lot of points in general, because even if they're not occupied, they do still cost, or they still count as, a lot of points. So nothing really special about this section. We're just killing as many people in the area as fast as possible. Uh, you only need to kill the three fuel rod turrets to finish this mission, but obviously we want to kill as many people as possible, as quickly as possible, to increase our score. We're going to kill these grunts quickly with a one-shot magnum kill. Then we're going to double back. Uh, I should have weakened this earlier so I could include it in the multi-kill. Uh, and I didn't even kill it with that grenade. There it goes. Good amount of damage there at least. Or not damage, but raw points from that uh, turret. And we're going to go up. And we're going to grab some plasma grenades up here in this little crate. Always be on the lookout for grenades, whether they're frags or plasmas. Because they dish out damage very quickly and efficiently. So always very useful. We're going to use said nades to take out this fuel rod turret. And we're actually going to uh, hijack this... Uh, this turret right here, this plasma turret. And unfortunately, you don't get any points for these grunts that are sitting in the turrets. Whether you hijack the turret and knock them out or you shoot them out, uh, you don't get any points for the grunts themselves, but you do get points for the turrets when you blow those up. Some vehicles you could damage enough where the pilot will actually get out, and then you could get two kills, one by killing the vehicle and one by killing the pilot that just got out. But for plasma turrets, that is not the case. So either shoot them out or hijack them. Either way, it doesn't matter because you're not going to get points anyway. But don't worry, we're going to get a gold star anyway, even without the points from that one grunt. And we're going to keep on moving up here, killing as many people as we can. And we're just going to hop in here. This one is vacant already, so we're going to hop in, try to quickly and efficiently take these guys out. And I'm getting naded. But that's alright, because we're going to blow it up ourselves now, so who cares? They just helped me out. We're going to roll around here where the final turret is. The final uh, fuel rod turret, at least shoot these guys. You could always uh, throw grenades across the barrier 
You don't have to come all the way around here. Use your regeneration field as needed, like I just did. I took some damage. That was kind of a reckless trip I took in there. But uh, we took the turret out, and now we just have to go down to the bottom to get in a Hornet to finish this mission, and we will be done. And there are more enemies that come in from the, uh, the bottom right side, so we'll see some of those guys possibly. Took out that turret for a last batch of uh, points there, and here are the enemies I promised. Some enemies like to come out of that shield door. So we'll take them out for a few extra points at the end there as well. And after all is said and done, we got over 65,000 points where we only needed 45,000. And again, this is without any score or damage boosters or anything like that. So for this mission, we're supposed to escort the Wolverines up to the top of the map, but we're pretty much going to ignore them and just kind of plow ahead and just do our own thing. We're going to string together a bunch of multi-kills, as uh, you've probably guessed. There's a pattern here. Multi-kills and sprees are the way to go. We're going to blow up that turret, take out that grunt, there's a lot of grunts in this mission, and they're spaced out pretty well, so you can kind of walk forward and shoot them with a magnum, a one-shot kill, to keep your spree, or your uh, multi-kill going, rather. Um, so it's a pretty uh, well-laid-out map for maintaining a long, long multi-kill. You can see I'm kind of just slowly, methodically moving my way forward, and then one-shot killing these grunts or meleeing them. Uh, that's always a viable option as well. Um, you can see I got a, uh, a Killionaire air going here, and we're just going to keep it going, really. And remember, like I mentioned in the previous mission, it doesn't matter how you take the grunts that are sitting in the turrets out. They will never bail. They'll just sit in there and wait for you to kill them. But the two best ways to take out these turrets is to either throw grenades at it from afar, and the other way, if you want to conserve grenades or just don't have any grenades, is to get up close and personal and hijack the turret, and you'll knock the grunt right out of there. So now that we've killed the majority of the enemies that are immediately ahead of the Wolverines, we're going to double back and check on them. Not because we're particularly uh, interested in their well-being, but because sometimes there's some enemies down here taking pot shots at them so we could add those guys to our kill list as well. But more importantly, if you double back, that will allow more enemies to spawn in up top. Uh, so you can see there's a bunch of grunts here again that we could string together into what we will hopefully get to be a Killionaire. And uh, we did it. Another Killionaire for the books. There we go. And eventually, once the Wolverines pass a certain point, they will start spawning behind the Wolverines and kind of chasing them up to the final destination up here. So now that the Wolverines have reached the midpoint, there's not going to be just a ton of enemies in front of them anymore. There's going to be some enemies behind them and some enemies in front of them in small amounts, but nothing uh, major anymore. Uh, so I'm going to try to stick a little closer to them at this point, try to protect them a little more, even though they have plenty of health on their own. We're not really worried about them blowing up. Just worried about where the enemies are, basically, so we can get more kills. And uh, you could see here that Elite was taking some damage, and he's still alive. I'm going to throw a nade at that group of enemies. Hopefully you could take out the entire flock of them, if, uh, if at all possible, as they get deployed. And we did so, and that was great. And now we're going to go back. You can see a small amount of enemies in the back here chasing the Wolverines up. Uh, the way I'm so accurately shooting the Magnum, especially in the beginning when I was stringing together all those Killionaires is from uh, using the right joystick. Um, if you just use the left joystick to move around, I think it's the left or right. I might be mixing them up, but there's one joystick to move around, um, and you could still shoot while you're just moving around. But if you use the other joystick as well, you could aim a lot better. And you do move more slowly when you're doing that, but your aim is ridiculously better. So it makes it uh, easier to string together multi-kills and everything like that. So definitely try that out. If you're having trouble uh, shooting, you may not even know that functionality was there. But here we go, the last wave of enemies coming out of a dropship. I don't know why the Wolverines aren't focusing their fire on the uh, the dropship. They are anti-air, you know, artillery units or whatever they are. But, you know, they're distracted. I understand. It's a battlefield. And there we go. Mission accomplished. Let's see what we got. Over 94,000, and we only needed 75. On to A4. We're going to spawn in, hop in the Wraith, and we are going to blow up the barrier that is in our way with this Wraith. You don't get any points for this, unfortunately, but that's all right. We're going to move forward, and we are going to take out as many people as possible with this Wraith. And if it gets too damaged, if you're uh, dangerously close to dying with it, you could always hop out, blow it up to get some points, and then hop into a new Wraith. There are a bunch of Wraiths uh, lying around this level. But we're just going to move forward at this point. Easy enough. Not too many enemies to start. We're just going to use our Plasma Turret and our Mortar on top, the main weapon. So we're going to take out this anti-air wraith on the right, and then we're going to turn our attention to the left. There is a regular wraith. We're going to damage it until it's about to blow up, and that will get the elite inside of it to bail. And then that way we could get a kill on the elite and the wraith. If we only blow it up, 
with the elite inside, we will only get one kill. So we want to damage it to a point where he's about to bail. He gets out, you get two kills instead of one. So you get more points that way. This little section, I'm kind of killing all the enemies as fast as possible. The way I do that is I use my Wraith Mortar to take out the anti-air Wraith and the plasma turret set up there. And I just kind of try to move my body in a circular fashion around the area to take out all the infantry. Uh, because the Wraith, you just have to touch to an enemy and they will just fall over and die. It's like they're soccer players. They just collapse. It's like the world has ended. But to be fair, uh, a Wraith is pretty big. Soccer players, I don't know what their issue is. But people who just got run over by a Wraith tank, I could see that being an issue for them. Anyway, my Wraith tank was a mess. It was about to blow up. So I hopped into this fresh ride here, parked on the side. That Wraith is always there and available for you. And I blew up my old Wraith to get more points. And again, we are using the strategy of damaging the Wraith enough so the pilot bails. And then we are going to kill the Elite and the Wraith separately. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that with the anti-air Wraith. That's why you didn't see me do it here. Uh, we can't use the same strategy. For whatever reason, the pilot never bails out of the anti-air Wraith. So we can't use that same strategy to get more points. But we're going to get enough points as it is. So fear not. There are some final enemies over here. You could actually run to the end of the level without taking out any of the remaining enemies. All you needed to do was take out the anti-air wraiths. But again, we're here for points, and you want to make sure that before you run to that final nav point, you take out the wraith you were just in. So turn around, throw some nades at it. If you're out of nades, find some, and if you can't find any, just shoot it until it blows up. It will take a little while longer, but it will work. And let's check out the scoreboard situation here. 125k and only needed 105, so there we go. On to the next one. In this final mission of Operation A, we are going to run over here to start to grab some shotgun ammo off the ground. You can see it. We just ran over it right there, just started sprinting over it. And then we are going to start meleeing all of these grunts over here to form a giant multi-kill chain. There are going to be a ton of grunts coming out of this doorway. And we are just going to melee slash one-shot kill them with our magnum or shotgun, whatever you see fit. I suggest the magnum. And we're just going to run back and forth. You can see I have the multi-kill still going. It's a Killionaire for the ages, people. How many Killionaires did Peter Piper pick a pack of pickled peppers if Killionaires were picked by Peter Piper? I don't know. There's so many over here. Just keep doing this. And you have the sprint uh, armor ability in case you get too weak. You can kind of just sprint away to safety if you find yourself about to die. But the majority of the enemies for a long, long time, like two minutes at least, are just these grunts coming out of the uh, the shield doors to the top left and right up here. So you could just string together a ton of kills. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to keep it going. Keep the party going. It started, and it ain't stopping. It's a can of Pringles, and there are so many Pringles. This can of Pringles is so much bigger than your standard can of Pringles. This can of Pringles is long. This can of Pringles is strong. But eventually, you will have to make your way down towards the bottom right side of this map because that is where the enemies will start coming from. But who says you can't bring the party with you? Bring that Pringle can. You are the party. Look at this. We are just bringing it to a different shield door. They're going to come out of this shield door now. That's fine. We'll just melee them over here. Uh, remember to uh, check your shield generator as mine is going down. But that's all right. It's a party. Take that shield off. All right. Uh, there's no more enemies over here. We're good now. And uh, oh, here we go. Here's a grunt. They do start to thin out eventually. But we've gathered the majority of the points we need uh, right in the beginning there with those... Billions of Killionaires we got off the top. And now things are getting a little dicey. There's some elites thrown into the fray. Uh, you want to watch out for that. But we're still just racking it up over here. Um, there is a shield regenerator armor ability over here. If you want to exchange for that at any point, down towards the right. I'm just getting more shotgun ammo right there. And uh, we're bringing the party to whoever wants it. First name Amazon, second name Prime. Two-hour delivery via party drone. All right, let's get this guide back on track. We are off the rails. We are going to go to the bottom corner at around this time. You can see the countdown timer says a minute 10. At about a minute 5, there will be a wraith that spawns in on the left shield door, and we're going to sprint to it and hijack it right away as it spawns into the map. Sorry, guy. This is my wraith now. So just hijack it, and then we could use this wraith, obviously, to continue our reign of terror, our party terror, and uh, we're just going to... Lay into all these guys now uh, without much fear of serious opposition because we have a wraith and they don't, frankly. So that's how that works. We're just going to hang here in this corner. Uh, there are sometimes enemies that come in from where I'm shooting or on the other side where I'm shooting now. Uh, they don't seem to be coming through this time, though, but that's okay. There are still plenty of people in the middle here we could shoot at. And uh, we only have 30 seconds to hold out. This is one of those missions. Uh, I should have said this off the top, but it's one of the missions where you have to just hold out and survive until you are evac'd at the end. So we're waiting for that Hornet to come in. 
Oh, there's an elite that spawned in at the door. Like I mentioned he would. We're just going to splatter him. He tried to get away, but we chased him right into a corner. That's not a great place to be if you're trying to get away. So less than 10 seconds left. We're almost out of time to get points, but we actually get an additional 30 seconds because once the Hornet gets here at the end of this timer, we get an additional 30 seconds before the Hornet leaves. So an additional uh, timer will pop up. You can see now it is up there on the screen. I'm going to take this time to get some more points while I'm here and uh, killed a couple elites, and we're going to blow up this wraith we were just in to get some more points. That is a hefty sum of 6,000 points. And then I'm going to sprint over here and hop in the Hornet, and uh, we are going to peace out of this place. And the mission will end, and let's see how much we accumulated. We needed 115 in this version of the game, and we got 163. So, again, the gold star thresholds may differ depending on which version of the game you're playing, but this is the Xbox One version, so it's 115. We got 163. And that's all for this one, guys. Stay tuned for an Operation B Gold Star Guide. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.